Uh, I know that some in our audience know the finer points of hockey. The Chris Johnston Show. We are your friends. The biggest stories bringing you inside the game. What did you hear? The Chris Johnston Show. What is going on? Here's Chris with your host, Julian McKenzie. Part of the game. It is Thursday. And by the time you all get this, I am probably on my way to watch the Carolina Hurricanes and the Montreal Canadiens duke it out at the Bell Center. Why else would I want to go watch that game and be in the press box? It's the Asperic Cock and Yemi revenge game, of course. Uh, I'm, I'm into these revenge games, Chris. Well, they they make the season go around, right? It's it's a little extra juice uh, on the, the subject there. And, and look, I, I do think with the way everything played out, an offer sheet's pretty rare in this league. The fact that Montreal had had tabled one to Sebastian Ajo a couple of years ago, you know, there, you know, I, I don't know that it's that personal. I, I think some people maybe overstate that, but there's a little bit extra something in the building, and I'm curious to see how how Kakinami plays with the spotlight on him uh, and everything that's gone on. Yeah, I'm curious with that too. Uh, we weren't going to make the episode about him. There are actually uh, two other pressing topics we wanted to talk about today. Uh, you know what? I'll leave it. I to should you. say before we'll, we go too we'll go far. Ahead. Go because ahead. the audience likes to know maybe how the sausage is made here. Yes, you are do. you are a saint, man. Because it really? would not be an episode if I didn't have at least five minutes of technical difficulties before we get started. <laughs> and that happened again today. It was something totally different, like a totally new issue. And you still just come in all happy and and feeling it. And so I'm giving you some early props, Julian, because uh, I appreciate you're, you're, that. You're a patient man. I appreciate that. Here's the thing, man. Like. We're at the mercy of the internet and we're at the mercy of technical issues. There's no sense getting mad. Like la- this time around last year, uh, I was doing like one podcast I was on. We were having technical issues from my end, like all the time. Like my internet was always bugging out. And after I was going through that and I saw how patient everyone else was, that kind of, I kind of learned that, you know what, y- you shouldn't be maligning anyone else for their issues because, hey, not everyone has the same setup and the internet can be just unpredictable. So dude, the issues that you're having, they pale in comparison to what I experienced. So don't even worry about that. Like, and also you're just, you're Chris Johnston. Like, like, why would I be annoyed? Like, like, dude, we get, I get to be more informed uh, by asking you questions. Like, like, what am I, what am I going to do? What do you want me to do? Right. I just got to dial this setup in, man. I mean, the perfect (laughs) world. It's funny. Like the one thing I didn't expect with COVID, you know, we started doing TV hits from home. I'd never done that prior to COVID. Um, And and just, you got to get the lighting right. I know my lighting isn't great. I live in a condo. Obviously there's windows everywhere. Everything's backlit. Every direction is backlit unless I did it into the kitchen, which isn't much of a background either. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's all these first world problems I recognize, but man, I, I wouldn't mind being back at a studio at some point, you know? Yeah, I think about that a lot. Like, you know, when I was at CTV uh, for a little while, and I know we'll, we'll get to Evander Kane and we'll get to Mark Bergerman. Those are the two, ish, two topics we're going to talk about. But I just want to mention this small anecdote. Like when I was at CTV and I was working uh, primarily in a studio and during the pandemic, like I had to like go work from home. Like those were some of the toughest like stretches like ever. There was like one day, like I just could not get on the air because my internet just sucked. So, yeah, right. I, I, I feel you about getting in a studio. Um, one thing, uh, you mentioned the phrase in a perfect world. You know who said in a perfect world earlier this week? Mark Bergman, the Montreal Canadiens general manager who held an impromptu press conference. I was very surprised when I uh, took a break from my editing desk shift and made myself lunch and then noticed 30 minutes ago, Mark Bergman spoke to the media. <laughs> that was very surprising to me. Um were you? Did you get the uh, the call? Did you? Were you in on the call at all? Or, well, I was because I saw Renault Lavoie TVA tweet uh, en français. Mark, <laughs> Mark Bergevin is is speaking right now. I meant no, whatever. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And then so I was able to click on the link at that point and, and catch it, but I had no advance warning about it. Um, and yeah, look, it's it it's never a perfect world. Let's put it this way. If your GM feels no. the need to speak to the reporters four, to eight, four games into the season, um, you know, that's a sign that things have likely gone awry or you've made a trade and the Canadians didn't make a trade. I don't think they're going to make a trade, frankly. I think that it's quite clear that, that that they have to find their own way out of this. And so, yeah, that was that that's that's newsworthy, noteworthy in itself. I think it's unique to Montreal, you know, where you're sitting right now, Julian. It's it's the kind of market where the team is just such a point of focus 
so tied to history and, and culture and, and, and the, the community there that when things are going bad, the GM feels the need to, you know, try to calm things down, you know, even in Toronto or other passionate marketplaces, I think that, that, you know, Kyle Dubas can rely on the Raptors taking up some, some real estate or the Blue Jays or whatever's going on, uh, you know, outside the Maple Leafs walls. And, and, you know, they just don't have that, that same ability to do that in Montreal. So yeah, that was really surprising. And as I say, I honestly think it's the only market in the league where that would even happen when a team starts 0-4. I'm, I'm just not sure anyone else would be in a position to even think to do that. Uh, you know, the, the the Blackhawks, you know, Stan Bowman's not coming out and doing that in Chicago. They've had a tough start too, to, to pick another team. So yeah, that was uh, a little bit of a development there. Yeah, it was very, very strange to see. And I mean, I, I think the way that the Canadians have lost at least like two of those four games very bad. Like you lose to the Sabres and the Sharks that the way that you do, it's bad. But I, I didn't think it was so bad that Mark Bergman had to be like, you know, what, four games in, I'm giving the vote of confidence. Like that's a little bit like he's kind of stepping ahead of things here. That's that's just the way that I saw it. I was just a bit surprised that that was even out there. I, I don't know. That was weird. Well, I think it adds some gas to the fire here. And and I'm not sure he had water at his disposal, if you know what I'm saying. Like, it's not really a yeah. criticism. Like, I don't know that there's anything you could do to, to stop the fire at this point. I mean, a victory would be nice. Um, you know, beating the Hurricanes on Thursday will be a start if that happens, at least just towards normalizing things, settling into the season, all those those types of issues. But, um, you know, I don't know there's anything he could have said in that availability that, that would calm the waters at all. But, you know, just from afar watching it, Julian, I was thinking like, man, this – this only adds fuel to the fire. It makes it look more unstable. It makes it look more um, volatile, I guess. And you know, as I say, it's not really a shot at them. Look, we're reporters. It's nice when people come out and talk about the sport. You know, it helps us cover it. It helps give us context. You know, all those things. So, you know, I want to be clear that that yeah, I just I just don't know what you could accomplish, I guess, with that action and. I really don't think that anything is calmer today than it was yesterday when he when he decided to go in front of the mics. I wonder if him saying that in a perfect world, he would want to stay on as Canadian's general manager would try to kind of take some of the heat off the team and put some of that attention back on him. But I'm left thinking, what is the phrase in a perfect world? Like, I, I thought about this yesterday and I know we've, that was the follow-up question before. I wanted to ask if I was there, yeah. what, yeah. what is a perfect world? Like, what does that mean? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, like I, I was, I was talking about on radio uh, this morning on TSN 690 and uh, one of the radio hosts, Connor McKenna was saying in a perfect world could mean wanting more money and wanting more power in your organization. And I know we've discussed that as maybe money might be the biggest decider in this, in this whole ordeal, but the longer this drags on, the longer I feel that in a perfect world means being in a situation where you're not maligned by media and you're not being second guessed for every move that you make. Like I, I, I'm more and more convinced and I don't have any intel. This is more just gut feeling than anything. I have more and more of a feeling that Mark Bergevin probably wants greener pastures somewhere else. I think it's reasonable to conclude that, but I, I am... I'm confident based on what I know of this situation that there is an amount of money he would stay for. And, you know, I think that a lot of this really just stems from that. Honestly, it's funny, like we can chop this up for 10 different ways. And, and, you know, I know it's being talked about so much there in Montreal, but I really believe in July when, when Jeff Molson and Mark Bergman sat down and had a conversation if the dollars got to a certain point, he would have signed it at that point in time, would have been a natural extension, right? Just after the Stanley Cup final, you know, heading into this last year of his current deal, um, no one would have thought anything of it. It would have been a press release and maybe a press conference and we'd all move on. The fact that that didn't happen, that, you know, August passes, you get through September, now we're into mid-October, the team's struggling. You know, it's like a snowball going downhill um, with, in terms of momentum, it's going to be a storyline no matter you know, what Mark says, like he, I, I did see in French, he said something to the effect that, um, you know, his contract has nothing to do with the team. Like he, he prefer we weren't focused on this. We weren't talking about it, but it's hard to ignore it. Right. Because if this does become a lost season, I'm not going to pronounce it that after four games, but if this is coming to a point where maybe some tough decisions have to be made, maybe some trades have to be contemplated. You know, I, I think from an organizational standpoint, you have to be comfortable with the person doing that. 
And, you know, Mark Bergeron says he has full control and, and, you know, I have no reason to believe he's going to do anything to sabotage a team, but, you know, I think you want a, a longer than 10 month plan when you're making some of those decisions for your organization. So, um, you know, in a perfect world, I, I really think it's money, honestly, you know, the Canadians are one of the teams, I'll tell you this, that, that pay their employees in Canadian dollars rather than us dollars. Uh, most of the league, they're, they're not the only one, but they're one of a handful of teams that don't do that. So it's like they already have to make up a currency gap because of, you know, the U.S. dollar stronger than the Canadian dollar. And then, you know, I think Mark feels after 10 years, after a trip to the cup final, um, you know, being in that marketplace that he wants to be paid among the best GMs in the league. And that wasn't the offer that was that was tabled to him. So if that's the case, then what about with the way the record looks right now? I mean, they're they're 0 and 4. Uh, at the time of this recording and they have a game against the Carolina Hurricanes before the tonight before the end of this month they have a road trip in California and fans know that you know the California road trip could be here or there it doesn't matter if the teams aren't necessarily in the best of standing Ugh, traveling to California for whatever reason is always a, a bag of, of mixed results for the Montreal Canadiens like what if the Canadians are, are so bad by November December? that maybe retaining Mark Bergman just isn't the best idea. Well, I actually think it's funny because there's two sides to this conversation. I think that there's an argument that this would be a good time to move on from him. Um, you know, he's, he's had a long time at the helm. They're kind of, I still feel like they're stuck in between being, you know, an, an elite contender and not as bad as, you know, like the, I don't see them bottoming out this year, at least as currently constructed. I mean, Stranger things have happened, but it doesn't. It, they, they point to me to be a team that's going to be in the mushy middle um, when when all's said and done. And so, I think you could take the hockey decision. That we need a fresh set of eyes on this. We need someone to execute another five year plan, whatever. Like you know, that that's that's part of it. I think the other part though is who are you going to hire? Because you and I both know that it seems a francophone needs to be in this job. Yeah. Um, you know, probably the best general manager in the league. You know, just react of, in Tampa. I was going to say, doesn't matter what language you speak. Is is Julian Brisebois? It so happens that he he would fit the criteria. I think to be the Canadian GM, if you're saying it, it needs to be someone who speaks French and is a francophone. You know, it's a small pool of people to draw from, and so that's part of the leverage I think Mark Bergevin has here. Is I don't see a natural replacement for him, assuming that they're going to want to hire someone that speaks French. Um, you know, if, if you're just going out and getting the best person and, and you're fine with an Anglophone doing the job, then it's a different conversation. But, um, you know, I, I think that he does have leverage because there's not it, the, the, the next person isn't sitting there. Like the minute Brisebois signed his extension in Tampa, that that took that off the table as a potential solution for the Canadians. And, and so I think that that's part of the dynamic at play that it's. Again, unique to that market. There's no other team we could be talking about. What are they going to do with their GM? And this would be a dynamic of the conversation, but it's front and center when it comes to the Canadians. Yeah, I, I've always said that if I was ever Jeff Molson, I would fly down to Tampa. If Julian Brisebois had not uh, signed his extension, I put the blank check in front of the uh, I put the blank check in front of Julian Brisebois, and I'm like, "What do you want?" Because he is the best general manager in the National Hockey League. His his, his capologist style, the way he's been able to to have these teams win back to back Stanley Cups in the Stanley Cup era. As far as I'm concerned, the Tampa Bay Lightning are the most successful team in the Stanley Cup in the uh, the salary cap era. I said Stanley Cup era, the salary cap era. And I know the Pittsburgh Penguins have also won back to back, but winning back to back in a pandemic. I don't know. I, I, and and they didn't the just win back to back, back though, right? Like the, I, yeah. I point this out about the Lightning. They lost twice in game seven of the Eastern Conference final, and they lost in the 2015 Stanley Cup final to Chicago. Like they, they had did. five legitimate cracks at cups since 2015, you know, 2015 to 2021. Like that, that is that's a run, my man. Like that, that is legit. And so you know, with a couple more bounces, maybe they have four banners instead of two. I know that you can't really, you can't really look at it that way, but they've consistently put themselves there. They've, they've done a great job with their contracts. They keep finding players in the second and third round that, that allow them to, to extend this competitive window. Uh, they've made hard decisions. You're right. I, I, I don't, I'd have trouble finding a team that's been managed better. And, and Julian was there when Steve Eisman was there. Like, like obviously credit still goes to Steve Eisman, but Julian was his number, his right-hand man in those decisions. So he's been part of building that thing from the ground up. And do you know what's interesting? Way back in those days yeah. when he was the assistant GM, 
Julian Breezeball had an out in his contract where he could go work for Montreal. Basically, I, I don't know exactly how the contract was structured, but it was it was essentially like you can't leave for any job but Montreal. Wow. And so there was a time where, again, this is when Steve Eisman was still his boss, but if Montreal wanted to make him the GM, they could have hired him. Uh, it was within his contra- contractual rights to do so. And you know, obviously that didn't happen, but um, you know, great for the Lightning because I'm with you. I think that that they are running as well as any team. And I'm not, you know, look, they're, they're in it right now. They had a Kucherov injury this week and, and there's some uncertainty there, but you know, this is a team, if, if they won again this year or next year, I don't think anyone would be that surprised. Um, I didn't want to bring up the lightning and the fact that Nikita Kucherov is back on LTIR, uh, a bit of a weird kind of transition for Bergman to that, but anything, any thoughts on that? Like, I know some people are like, Oh, here go the lightning again on LTIR. They cheated. I'm tired of those people. Any any thoughts on what Tampa's going through? Well, look, they they might have some people might call it cheating. I I, I put it under that if you're not cheating, you're not trying kind of mm-hmm. you know thought here. I mean, there's tons of teams around the league that are stretching the cap in every possible way they can. You know, the team in my backyard, the Maple Leafs are doing it. But there's, you know, go to just go to Puck PD here, Cap Friendly, whatever your favorite site is, and look how many teams are right up against it and look at their daily moves. Like so many teams are doing everything they can to to basically build the best roster they can under 81.5 million. Um, so, you know, I don't have any issue with the, what the Lightning did last year. I, I get the frustration. I mean, do you know how hard it is to miss an entire season, even a shortened season, and come back in the playoffs? Like, I, I'm not sure, I, because people were so focused on the cap machinations, I'm not sure there was proper appreciation for how good Kucherov was last year and how tough that, you know, he basically like joined the marathon halfway through the race and, and had to be up to speed. And, and I don't think many players could do that, uh, frankly. And so anyway, that's not what you're asking about. You're asking about right now. I mean, he's got a legitimate injury. They'd rather have him, no doubt about it. Um, you know, I think it's going to be, this is a tough season for the Lightning. You know, they lost an entire line of players, an effective line for them. You know, now they're down Kucherov for a period of time. Like that's four of their top nine forwards from last year's cup right there. You know, as you mentioned, they won two cups in the pandemic era, like not even a year apart. So they played more hockey by a mile than any other team. And, you know, it's just, I think it's reasonable to think they're going to have some either struggles or more injury problems just with the sort of the, the duress they've been under as individuals and as a team. And so, you know, I think the Atlantic division's pretty competitive at the top. Um, I haven't seen anything in the early going, not to think that Boston and Toronto are going to be good. You know, Florida looks really good to start. Yeah, they do. They have a couple intriguing rookies there in Lundell and, and Spencer Knight, the goaltender. You know, like like I it's a it's gonna be a tough year, I think. Not to make like the lightning are making the playoffs, I think, but I don't know that it's gonna be cruise control. You know what I'm saying? And so that you'd rather have Kucherov, all things being equal. Um, you know, I think he's highly motivated to play at the Olympics in Beijing. So I don't I don't see this being like a six month injury, you know, I think it's more likely to be a two month injury type of thing. And yeah. Anyway, I, I don't have deep thoughts on it because they don't get the That's same cap. They don't, they don't get the same cap benefit, right? Like I think maybe people don't understand the exact machinations. Like what was unique last year is they were able to exceed the cap by his contract because he didn't play at all during the regular season. So right now they could go over, you know, he's on long-term injured reserve. They could go over the cap by a nine and a half million, uh, his contract, but the minute they had to activate him, they'd have to be back cap compliant. And so, you know, it's not like they can go get a $9 million player and keep him when Kucherov's back. And so this is, this is going to be, I think a, a bit of a rough ride for the lightning uh, without him. And, you know, they've shown they can do it in the past, but this team, it's like they've just endured a lot of little paper cuts with some of their losses here. And I think it's going to be a, a tough season for them to, you know, to be at the top of the Atlantic division. I think the other teams have had more rest and they got more, more reasons to be motivated than the lightning do. Absolutely. But uh, like I've probably alluded to, and, and I'm sure you probably feel the same way. Like they don't need to win the division to go on a run this year. They could easily, and, just and, and I like the, just get in and then anything could happen. They could easily go in as the fourth seed uh, or just like or like as a wild card team. And depending on who they face, you're like, they might be the favorite here. Like, I, that's how I see the Tampa Bay Lightning. Kucherov could be healthy by then. And they've been on those runs before. Like, that's that's how I see the, light, the Lightning kind of playing their year out. Like, don't sleep on them. I, I don't know if they're going to be three-peating this year. Like I, like I said, like I've said before, like, I think I'm all in on the Florida Panthers this year. Maybe not to the point where they might win the cup, but I think they're winning the division. But like the lightning, you you never want to sleep on. 
No, like no one wants to play face them in the playoffs. Like, like anyone who draws no. them in round one is like, oh man. Cause especially imagine you could win the division maybe and play the lightning. And yeah, you get to start that series at home, but you're, you're going against a two time cup champs, just a badass team. Like, like that team performs, man. Uh, even going back to those years, like it's, it's easy to say, Oh, well they, you know, I think they lost the one game seven to Washington, like three, nothing. And it was a, kind of a tough game for them. It was out in the home ice, but like th- that team, those, those guys get it done. Um, cause to even get to the game seven of the third round is an accomplishment. And so, you know, I, I'm with you. I, I, I think, I think it's going to be a rough regular season in some ways they'll be, they'll be tested, but I think ultimately they get in and, and they probably start on the road. They started on the road in Florida in round one last year. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't bet against them. Fortunately, I don't have to make the bets. So uh, yeah. I'll, I'll leave that to the experts out there. Yeah. I don't have to make any bets either. We're in October football season. Well underway. No better time than now, if you haven't already started in September, uh, to get yourself some skin in the game than by using BetMGM. They are the exclusive betting partner of The Athletic. And if you're a fan of The Athletic like I am, you can bet $10 to win $150 plus a free three-month subscription or extension to your subscription to The Athletic when you bet with BetMGM using our promo code. Just sign up at BetMGM.com and use the promo code the athletic pod at checkout to take advantage of this special offer from the king of sports books. That's the athletic pod. That's the promo code. You bet $10 and you could win $150 and also a three months free subscription or extension to your subscription for the athletic BetMGM.com and use the promo code, the athletic pod new customer offer. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Arizona, Colorado, Washington, D.C., Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia only. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona, 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Washington, D.C., Nevada, Wyoming, and Virginia, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan, 1-800-GAMBLER in Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Call or text the Tennessee Red Line 800-889-9789 in Tennessee or call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. Powered by OfficePools.com, all of the athletic hockey shows are giving you a chance to participate in their pools and uh, if you do that it looks as if you can get yourself some really cool prizes uh, officepools.com if you haven't already heard of them they were launched in 1995 as the first website that allowed people to manage a hockey pool online instead of waiting for the scores to be posted on the bulletin board or the company fridge remember those times when you went to an office and you had to go to a bulletin board to figure out what's going on those are really really weird days but now we're at the age now where we have slack i don't know Anyway, uh, here's some of the prizes you could win uh, if you join uh, the Athletic Hockey Pool powered by OfficePools.com. Uh, you are automatically entered to win a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. Uh, which one of your choice if you get the uh, opportunity to win? Uh, first, second, and third place could also get some signed jerseys from players like Sidney Crosby, uh, John Tavares as well. Uh, we'll get exact details on uh, some of the other jerseys as well coming soon. But uh, yeah, a lot of really cool jerseys you can win. Go to officepools.com, sign up and join the athletic hockey pool and make your picks for your chance to win some fantastic prizes. Well, you've been waiting on these ads. We finally have Manscaped ads on the Chris Johnston show. Will we ever get Chris to do one of these? Probably not, but that's okay. I think I, I've got an idea of, of how to do these ads. I've heard so many of them on the Steve Dangle podcast. One day I was even listening to Adam go about this. And I'm like, why is Adam talking about balls so much? I don't need to hear it that much. But I had heard about Manscaped from so many other places. I'm like, you know what? Damn it. I'm just going to just order from Manscaped and see what it's like. And I'll tell you what. The package they gave me, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. That package includes the lawnmower 4.0, uh, and, and it's really good, dudes. It's really good. Uh, Manscaped, they're the global leaders in male grooming, and they're trusted by over two million men worldwide. Do not get chirped this year for having a jumbo Joe Bush below the waist. And I, I, I I'm just going to peel back the curtain here. That line actually says that a jumbo Joe Bush below the waist. Join the Manscaped movement for all your hairiest grooming needs and get 20% off plus free shipping 
with the code CHRIS21 at manscaped.com. And get yourself a lawnmower 4.0. The 3.0 is pretty good. The 4.0, that's where it's at. I wanted to move on to Evander Kane. Uh, we know we all know about the San Jose Sharks forward suspended for 21 games uh, for being caught with a fake uh, vaccination card. I, look, I, it's nothing short of disappointing for me as someone who thought he had turned the corner around the time of the Hockey Diversity Alliance. Uh, I remember writing about him for Yahoo Sports, and since then, it's just been let down after disappointment after disappointment with this guy. And I, if I was a player in his locker room, I, I don't even know if I want to play with him again. And I feel he's burned so many bridges. But one thing that uh, actually, you know what, before I ask that question uh, about what the Sharks could even do with his contract, what, what were your thoughts on, on the fact that Evander Kane uh, put himself in this position and got himself suspended as, well, as long as he did? Well, I think we should remember, first and foremost, we're dealing with a human being yeah. um, and humans are imperfect and make mistakes. And I know Evander's made a few that we know about uh, over time, but he's not alone in that. Um, and so I am, I'm still sympathetic because like, it's, it's clear his life has got to a point. There's no way, you know, I haven't talked to him, but there's no way he's happy where he's at. You know, he's acknowledged that he's in therapy or receiving some counseling. Um, you know, he's filed for divorce. He's been accused mm-hmm. of betting on his own games. He's involved in a lawsuit with a casino in Vegas for not paying his debts. Um, there's a, now this vaccination card issue that's going to cost him another one and a half million dollars, but obviously he's got some financial issues going Like there's a lot going on in his life way outside of hockey. And so, you know, I, I hope for him, his sake and for, you know, his, his kid's sake, he's got a young daughter um, that, that he can get all that under control um, because there's no question when he plays, he can play. Like he had almost a point a game last year um, for the sharks. And so, you know, it's, it's hard to separate sort of the, you know, we're talking primarily on this podcast about people as you know, what they do on the ice, what the Sharks can do with this contract. What does this mean for the team? But, you know, I think my first thoughts really are just the individual and, and, you know, you hope he can find whatever peace he needs or or whatever help he needs to get his life on the right track. Cause I do think that's probably most important here. That's fair. Um, It's just that with, with a guy like Evander Kane, like this isn't a guy who just started his career and then this happened and now he's battling for a second chance. Uh, Some of those mistakes that he's made throughout his career we're talking about a career that has spanned through Atlanta, Winnipeg, and and Buffalo, and I'm I don't think I'm missing any other cities. Like no. enough general managers have seen him play enough. He's played with enough players in the National Hockey League, and he's built a reputation for himself as as a guy who might not necessarily be the best teammate. So I, I don't know if he's run enough track at this point with his latest transgression. So I have to question that as far as I'm concerned. Sure. You know, look, I'm not saying ignore everything he's done and everything's rosy and, you know, but I, but I can still be sympathetic that, you know, no one, if, if you step back and look at it, no one would have want their life to end up where his life has ended up um, with. And that's just what we know publicly, of course, or what's been alleged. Um, you know, it's clear. I, I think it's clear if we're, we're going to talk about his future as an NHL player, like that's somewhat in question, you know, he's still got three years on his contract after this one, but you know, I'm not convinced that San Jose wants him back at this point. Now, there's, there's, there's not many levers they can pull here. There's not all that much they can do. There is a scenario where, you know, once he's cleared his suspension at the end of November, they have to, you know, give him a spot to play. Um, but, you know, one question I do wonder, and I don't know the answer to is, has he been vaccinated? I mean, we know he produced a fake vaccination card. Has he actually been vaccinated? Uh, that will be important, I would suggest, in, in terms of if he can come back and join the team then. You know, I, I don't think he's tradable at this point in time. He, he has, it's kind of actually an unusual no trade clause in that he can name the three teams he can be traded to, which is very restrictive, of course, for San Jose because the three teams he names maybe have no interest in trading for him. Um, but I don't know if anyone would at $7 million cap hit and based on some of the things that are going on here. And so, man, like he's he's got work to do with whatever organization he might yet up end up in if it's not San Jose to, to win back the trust of, I think, the league, whatever players he's playing with. You know, he's he's got to show improvement or, you know, he's on the way out of this league really quickly. So why can't the Sharks just terminate his contract? Why can't they just be like, we don't want you here. Get out of here. We're, we're tearing this contract up. Well, the simple answer is the rules don't allow it, right? There's a CBA that governs basically how everyone has to operate, how business operates under the NHL umbrella. 
the players and owners have agreed to it. And under that CBA, it's contemplated, you know, off ice issues, off ice discipline. And, you know, that's, it was, it's section 18 of, of the CBA and that's what Evander was disciplined under, but, you know, 21 games, it's not a small suspension, Julian, we're talking a quarter of the season. We're talking one and a half million dollars. Um, you know, that's punitive in itself. And, Basically, the Sharks aren't allowed to punish him beyond that fact. Now, had some of the other things that were alleged against him, say if he was found to be gambling on on the sport, which is his strange wife had alleged, had that been you know substantiated or proven to be true, you know, then I think they would have had a case potentially to void his contract. But they they don't have that right now. And you know what'll be interesting to me is you have a contract, so that's the amount of money you have to be paid under the rules. You know. I wonder if it, the Sharks just think, hey, we don't want you back. We'll pay you to stay at home and then we'll buy you out in the summer. You know, that 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 could be an option that's available to them. And, you know, if he does that, Evander will get, you know, a chunk of the money that he's owed. But, you know, he loses his playing opportunity for the season. And again, it puts his career in jeopardy. I, I, th- I don't think it's a stretch or too alarmist to say his career is in some degree jeopardy here just because of, you know, we don't know when he'll play his next game. We don't know what team might want to sign him to do that. We don't know. We don't know. I guess I don't know the Sharks don't want him back, but it doesn't seem that way from where I sit. You know, I, I saw the comments from Logan Couture, Mark Edward Vlasic, um, you know, Kevin Kurz of The Athletic out of San Jose, you know, wrote a story in August about how, you know, at that point, we didn't even know all the stuff that's happened since, but that, that the teammates have grown tired of him. And so, you know, this is this is a player who's kind of dangling by thread, I think, in, in some ways, Julian, with his career. And you know, yeah, the Sharks can't terminate his contract and he's going to he's going to get paid some amount of what he has left on that contract, but it doesn't guarantee he's going to play anywhere under that contract. And that's probably what's most important to him at this point in time. Absolutely. I'll say this, like even if it was against the Montreal Canadiens, like the San Jose Sharks, their first game post announcement of suspension, they look like like a weight had been lifted off of them. And if the Sharks end up going on some decent run over the next course, of these 21 games, I don't know if you want to put Evander Kane back in that lineup. Right. Well, look, it's the first season without Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe in like 102 years uh, with yeah. respect to those guys. They're my age. Um, but, you know, like it's 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 a new beginning there. Right. Like they they still have some of their older established players, the Brent Burns, the Vlasics, the Couture's like those guys have been there a long time. But if you look at the last few years, their leadership group has lost Pavelski. It's lost Joe Thornton. Patrick Marlowe retired like they're turning over a new leaf. They have five rookies in their lineup right now. And. You know, I think that if you're if you're running that team, like you're comfortable not even challenging for a playoff spot this year. I think ultimately, I mean, they've got off to a decent start here. We'll see what they can do. Sometimes, sometimes you turn the keys over to the kids and they can drive the car. But you know, it's it's not a guarantee here. Um, but I, I do think that this season there is about renewing. It's it's about moving forward, and and that's why I, I sort of feel like you might not want to reintroduce that element into the dressing room, especially if there's some, you know, if, if there's some animosity built up with Evander and some of his teammates, um, you know, I, I think he might've run out of runway there. I mean, the sharks, to be fair, they stood by him through a lot. Like they stood by him through the gambling issue in Vegas and, and the, the, the lawsuit that came out of that. They stood by him when he declared bankruptcy. Like they've, it's, it's not, this wouldn't be a case where the first thing goes wrong. They, they toss a guy overboard. I, I think that they've been pretty loyal to this player, but I, I do also think it's possible. He's just burned through any goodwill that they have for him. And, and, you know, it, it, it might be time for a separation. It's just, I'm not sure how you separate under these circumstances. Yeah. It's a really interesting situation uh, with Evander Kane and the San Jose Sharks. I don't know if we've gotten to the bell yet. Sorry, Adam, but there was one segment I wanted to do before we end off this episode. And it's something that kind of came to my head after last Thursday's episode, where we were mentioning all these different people uh, who were like, yo, man, shout out to Emily Kaplan. Shout out to this person. Shout out to that person. We were showing them a lot of love. We were giving out flowers. That's it. We given people their flowers. And I think going forward, every Thursday, we should have an opportunity where we give someone their flowers or we we give them, you know, their due, their praise. So I'm calling this segment stick taps. Uh, yeah, we give someone a stick tap for this week. And uh, I, 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 I kind of just threw this out there. Uh, but I think the first person who I think is deserving of a stick tap this week 
Uh, I wish it was for happier circumstances, but Mike Bossy, uh, the New York Islanders legend uh, who had to step away from his his gig with TV Aspar uh, because he is battling lung cancer. Uh, I wish him nothing but the best in in what he in uh, in, in trying to buy, in trying to battle this disease. Uh, we all know how deadly cancer can be and how fucked it is. So I just wish him nothing but the best. And I think he's deserving of the first ever stick tap on the Chris Johnston show. Uh, all the best to Mike Bossy and, and his family and, and and for everything that he's going through. I hope he's able to battle through it. I love that. I love the spirit of this. I think gratitude is important in your life. It's good to, you know, to take a step back and look around and appreciate things that, that are, are good because sometimes – you only focus on the bad. And so I'm going to, I'm going to go a little different direction than you there, Julian, but I'm going to give my stick tap to the Sabres fans. Like who's okay. getting through more shit than that group? Like quite honestly, <laughs> yes. like 10 years of just, just getting fed and, and not getting anywhere near the playoffs and not having a lot to cheer for. And, and I know their building isn't full. Like a lot of them in the league, let's face it. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. There's a lot of, that goes into that, but you know, to see them get that three and zero start, they were chatting three and zero at the end, of, towards the end of their their most recent win there in the building. That was cool. Uh, you know, look, I, I I still don't think this is a team that's going to you know make a playoff charge or anything like that. But it's nice to to see a fan base that that hasn't had much to cheer about at least have some fun with it. You know, hope for better days ahead. And you know, I do think having gone, you know, it's only an hour and a half drive from there. I've been to a ton of games over my career in Buffalo. It's just, it's a great place to watch the sport. I think that they're real great hockey fans down there. They haven't had a lot to cheer for. And so I'm stick tapping them for sticking through it and uh, getting a few wins here at the start of a season. Here we go. In the inaugural edition of the stick tap segment, uh, Mike Bossy and the Buffalo Sabres fan base get the first ever stick taps from myself and CJ. And uh, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Chris Johnston show. Uh, Almost 30 minutes, I think. Oh, really? Like, I don't think we got the bell at all, actually. No, no, no. we got there, but but barely. Okay. So, oh. Adam Wilde can sleep well tonight. It's going we finally got his <laughs> wish, you know? <laughs> the big boss no man can can calm it down a bit with my text messages. So yeah, geez. And the phone. Wait, you're getting text messages? I've been getting phone calls. That guy, like when when Steve Dangle called him Captain Phone Call, he is not kidding. Yeah, yeah. Just calls. It's ridiculous. I and uh, but, do you know what's funny? Yeah. Every call that yeah. he, every time we've talked on the phone, Adam and I, it's minimum 30 minute call. So it's like, who are you <laughs> to hold 30 minutes to the podcast? Because we can't even just have a quick phone call. Like it's not possible. Like we just go down the rabbit hole and and before you know it, it's like a great amount of time has passed. So uh, yeah. he, he loves to talk. Oh, he does. Especially when he's all like, yeah, this will be not longer than five minutes. He tells me, yeah, not longer than five minutes. Yeah, right, buddy. Add a one or a two in front of that five. Yeah, that guy likes to talk. He likes to talk. Anyway, uh, for CJ, I'm Julian saying so long. Uh, I've already noticed some questions are coming in for Ask CJ. We do that every Monday. Uh, We will get to uh, answer some of your questions on the Monday episode. Subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to the SDPN YouTube page. That's where you're going to be able to watch some clips from our show, including full, including full episodes. So yeah, get to subscribing, join the discord as well. Uh, SDPN.ca is where you can find the link to the discord and you can join the thousands of people uh, who love and adore Chris Johnston. Uh Chris, uh, look, dude, people love you in the discord, man. I can't wait to see you again in the discord. I'm going to jump in this weekend. All right. All right. I'll 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 be be in there at some point. All right, Siege. Uh, Good talking to you and peace. All right. See you, bud. The Chris Johnson Show. Inside the game, twice a week. Follow Chris on Twitter at ReporterChris. And follow Julian McKenzie at JK McKenzie.